are back in Kansas City, Arrowhead Stadium, on a 19-degree afternoon. As we check in downstairs with Tony Sergusagus. Thanks, Getty. Three things about today. It's going to be loud, it's going to be cold, and you're going to watch two great run games. This is the kind of game that you're going to need those big guys up on the line of scrimmage. When I look at Kansas City's run game, defensively they run a 3-4. That means they're only going to have three defensive linemen. I think in that situation, the advantage is going to go to that Seattle run game. To me, Marshawn Lynch is not the only running back in the backfield for Seattle. You're going to need to have to account for Russell Wilson. He is unpredictable, and that makes him extremely dangerous. The decisions that he's going to make today when the ball is in his hands is going to be the biggest factor in today's game. Keep on, Goose. Pete Carroll Seahawks have won their last three franchise record 350 yards on the ground last Sunday against the Giants. Across the way, Andy Reid's Chiefs, 3-1 and one at home this season. They have won their last four overall. Doing it old school. I think that's one of the more surprising things when we talk about the fact that there's not a wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs with a receiving touchdown. You go back to what Andy did when he was the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. There were times when they were 70% pass, 30% run. He'd get you know, out of whack in that run-pass ratio, but he's doing it much differently here, building a strong foundation and, and just have always enjoyed the approach and the style of Pete Carroll, and he really feels like his group is getting closer and closer as they get their players back into the starting lineup to that style of play that took them all the way to the Super Bowl last season. Chiefs have won the toss, elect to defer. Cairo Santos gets things started. We are underway here at Arrowhead. Running start for the rookie out of Colorado, Paul Richardson on the return for the Seahawks. And he is up in it. Ball comes loose. And the Seahawks recover. Jerron Johnson falls on it. That's a good job by Paul Richardson fielding the kick. But look how loose it is off the body. And there's the hit. Albert Wilson puts his helmet right on the ball. Very fortunate not to have a turnover on the opening kickoff. So Russell Wilson and the Seahawks start from their 25-yard line. Wilson rushed for over 100 yards last week for the third time this season. 30 out of 11 record as a starter now in his third NFL season. Seahawks empty the backfield on first down. And Wilson's pass out to the 30-yard line is caught by Richardson. Sean Smith, the tackle, gain of five. And I agree with Tony. These guys up front uh, are going to have to do a good job in the run game because, really, Marshawn Lynch is, is the key to this team. A lot of people talk about Russell Wilson and everything that he does. But it's not just from a productivity standpoint for Marshawn Lynch. The emotion, his style of running is infectious throughout this team, even to the defensive side of the ball. You hear Earl Thomas talk about it all the time. I love watching Marshawn Lynch run. He sets the tempo and the tone for our team. On second and five for Reed Option, it's Lynch. The Chiefs defense ranked seventh. They are first against the pass. Yeah, first against the pass, but that might not be the area that Seattle's coming at them. It's going to be these guys up front. Don Terry Poe, one of my favorite interior linemen in the NFL. This front seven's going to have to do a great job. They're going to see all kinds of different runs. They're going to see power, zone blocking scheme, zone reads, trying to determine whether Russell Wilson's going to keep it or give it. So they're going to have their hands full this afternoon. Empty backfield once again, third down and two as Wilson's pass is batted back by the NFL leader in sacks this season, number 50, Justin Houston. Great timing with Houston coming off the left side here. Goes eyes in the backfield on Russell Wilson, does a nice job of just getting his hand up, deflecting the pass. That's a huge play for this defense. Seahawks go three and out on their opening possession. John Ryan will punt it away. The Anthony Thomas back deep for the Chiefs. Thomas lets it bounce, takes a Seahawks roll, and is touched at the 13 yard line.
But Kansas City offense onto the field, led out by Alex Smith, who will make his 100th regular season start. Hey, Moose, you know what's really crazy? Both of these quarterbacks not wearing gloves. <laughs> I have gloves on down here. My fingers are so numb, I can't feel the tips. But both of these quarterbacks do not wear gloves. I think they're the only guys on the team other than maybe the punter that's not wearing gloves. Yeah, they always say that, they, you know, they want to have that feel of the ball. They don't like the, the, the fabric, the rubberized coating, whatever it is that's on that glove. They don't like that between their hands and the, and the surface of the football. Uh, it's like holding an ice cube when you hold that ball. I was trying to, I was feeling them before this game, and he's still pulled his head. And many of the Seahawks do score without sleeves. Low snap, handled by Smith, has time, throws. And the catch is made at the 16-yard line by the tight end. Signed earlier this week, Philip Supernaw, Bruce Irvin, the tackle. And right out of the gate, Alex Smith with a tough snap from Rodney Hudson. That thing doesn't really get about a foot off the ground. Does a good job feeling that and getting his eyes back downfield. And then Smith finds Supernaw. Chiefs are without Anthony Fasano today. Also without wide receivers, Donnie Avery and A.J. Jenkins. Bunch formation to the right. Second down and seven. Smith looks left. And it's complete to Jamal Charles. Out to the 23-yard line, about a yard shy of the marker. Well, you mentioned all those guys that are out of the lineup today, Kenny, but... Yeah, you know, one of the guys who's in there is, is Jamal Charles, number 25. And not just in the running game behind that front right there, but also in the passing game. He's a very viable receiver out of the backfield. And that's why I think you, you, it's not a concern for the Chiefs with the fact that a wide receiver doesn't have a touchdown yet. Alex Smith is methodical down the field. He's going to use his tight ends. He's going to use his running back. We've seen that right here as this drive has opened up. Third down and one for the Chiefs. It's Charles. And Charles looks to have a Kansas City first down. Almost ran into his own player on that play. Again, just at the start of this game, the Kansas City defense comes out. They force a three and out. Their offense takes over. They convert on third and short. They're very good in situations during the course of the game. They're at the top of the NFL in a lot of key categories when you're talking about situational football. Third down being one of those. Right, fifth in the run game. Not convinced any turnovers. Thomas in motion, and it is Thomas who takes it out to the 33-yard line before he is tackled by Earl Thomas. So, DeAnthony Thomas on the end around games eight. Uh, this is just great timing because you're going to see him come right through here. But watch the timing that he has on this. It's just perfect. It gets him outflanked to the outside. That's Earl Thomas. He can cover a tremendous amount of ground. And DeAnthony Thomas does a good job of out leveraging him with that motion. Second down at two, three wide receiver set. has another Kansas City first down across the 40. Going up against the third-ranked Seattle Seahawks defense. Well, Seattle's getting a couple of guys back, but one of the guys they're missing right there, Brandon Meebane up front. Kevin Williams is going to fill in there. But they are getting Byron Maxwell back in the starting lineup. They've got Cam Chancellor back in the starting lineup. They're starting to get guys back. Bobby Wagner will be back next week. This defense is getting healthier, but I think the injury and the IR of Brandon Meebane is going to be a big challenge for Seattle moving forward. Yeah, he's definitely the leader on that defensive line. I miss him. Chief said an extra blocker, Donald Stevenson, along with the fullback, Sherman, as Charles gains six. Out to the 46-yard line, K.J. Wright on the tackle. I just like hearing the comments from not, not only his teammates, but from the Seattle Seahawks defenders as well. As you look at Jamal Charles and you think speed, breakaway guy on the perimeter, but very tough between the tackles. And you saw on that run right there, great patience, great feet as he moves through the, the interior of the offensive and defensive lines. Averaging close to five yards per carry this season. Second down and four. Smith backpedaling. He sets up the screen to Charles, another first down into Seahawks territory. Ball came loose at the end of the play, but he was ruled down in Charles games 13. Real nice job by his offensive lineman out front, Rodney Hudson, Ryan Harris. Watch these guys get downfield. Their blocks are almost simultaneous as they chop guys downfield. Well timed on that screen. 
So Charles picks up his third first down. Now Charles to the sideline, replaced by Niall Davis. On, on, on! On! Thomas in motion from the Seattle 41. This is Davis. Davis, after the initial hit, gains three down to the 38-yard line. So it will be second down and seven for this Chiefs offense against a Seahawks club that has not allowed an opening drive touchdown over their last 29 games. That's very impressive by this defense in transition with a lot of guys missing from last season starting off having some injuries in some key positions but being able to hold that together that's a great start. Chiefs have scored two opening drive touchdowns this season. Movement prior to the snap. They'll leave the hour referee. Alex Smith, just all the little things at the quarterback spot. Great Offside, cadence guy. Number 72 defense. I got penalty. Second down. Michael Bennett. You know which guys you're going after. Michael Bennett, his his specialty is getting upfield, getting off on that snap count as close as he can. Alex Smith recognizes that. He's very good at cadence. He had me flinching at practice on Friday a couple of times, Kenny. It's like you're still flinching. <laughs> Second down and two. Chiefs again send in the extra blocker, number 79, Stevenson. Davis in the backfield. The toss to Niall Davis. Looks to come back inside. And Davis takes it down to the... Seahawks 30 for another Chiefs first down. Well, I thought it was funny. It, you know, we had the Patriots earlier this season, and as you're getting ready for this game, you're watching some of the, the previous games, and you go back to that, that Kansas City New England game, and everybody thought it was is Tom Brady. Are we ready to make the switch? What's wrong with Tom Brady at this point of his career? I looked at it as wow. Kansas City can run the football. I mean, they just dominated the line of scrimmage against the New England Patriots that day. Niall Davis, Jamal Charles, that's a tough one-two punch for the Seahawks defense to handle today. Yeah, they wore them down. Signature win this season for the Chiefs. From the Seattle 30, it's Charles. And Jamal Charles is inside the 20. Finally tackled at the 16-yard line by Cam Chancellor as Charles gains 14. Mike McGlynn pulling and leading the way. Going to leave this spot, come right around. The lead blocker for Jamal Charles. KJ Wright not able to squeeze that down. McGlynn does a nice job there, staying with his block, hits him the first time, stays with him. Chiefs have Big picked man. up five first downs so far on this drive. From the Seattle 16, Smith throws, and the catch is made by the tight end, Travis Kelsey, and he takes it down to the eight. Travis Kelsey is going to be a tough matchup, especially when you get down here. You look at the size of him, the physicality. Second leading receiver for the Chiefs this season. Now the Chiefs send in both running backs, Charles and Davis on second down. Fingertip catching. Split backs, second and one. Remember, no touchdowns for a Kansas City wide receiver this season. This is Davis. KJ Wright, the tackle. Davis picks up another Chiefs first down, setting up first and goal from the five. A good assignment defense for the Seattle Seahawks on that play. You get that fake to get Jamal Charles on the perimeter quick. You're, you're expecting that defense to flow a lot quicker. But Seattle did a good job on the backside staying home. Was there for Niall Davis on the little counter. Chiefs have picked up six first downs, Darrell, on 12 plays. 13th play of the drive. The fullback Sherman back in. Ball in motion. First to goal from the five. It's Charles. Charles down to the one. Malcolm Smith. The tackle. Smash mouth football here, Dale. Ah, I think he should have stayed Down with his fullback on the outside. Let's see what happens. You got fullback on corner. Might have been able to get that edge set, but guess what? Cam Chancellor, number 31, was there in the hole on block. So good cut inside. Chiefs send in Dontari Poe on offense. Along with two tight ends. Is that a pass alert? 
Now that is a fullback right there, Darrell. Are you kidding me? On second and goal, Smith looking to throw. Under pressure being chased by Bennett. And he throws it through the corner of the end zone. This pass incomplete. Well, you, you put the big body in with Dontari Poe, and then you've got your traditional fullback, Anthony Sherman, right next to him. Heavy run thoughts. And then you do a little play action. Again, Seattle, well-disciplined in their assignments. Now the Chiefs, as we take one more look, send in a sixth and seventh offensive lineman. 74, Lincoln Bach, and 79, Stevenson. That's what I told you, Don. He goes big bodies up the line of scrimmage. 15th play of the drive. Third and goal. The toss to Charles to the edge, to the end zone. Touchdown. There is a flag. Illegal use of the hands and the face. Number 72 defense. That only is the crime. Touchdown. There's the hands to the face, Michael Bennett, number 72. But again, what a what a design. It, I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs really challenged the Seattle defense mentally on that drive, especially once they got into the red zone. Kenny pointed out how many big bodies were out there. And then we're still going to run option to the perimeter. We're not going downhill smash mouth football. A 15-play drive. Chiefs picked up seven first downs. It took over nine minutes. Santos, the extra point. Charles into the end zone for the fifth consecutive game. This game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 7-0 lead for the Chiefs. A 15-play, 86-yard drive. It took over nine minutes, and the Seahawks allow a touchdown of the opening possession for the first time since the 2012 season. Running start once again for Richard City. Let's it bounce. Takes it at the six. And he's down at the ten. Junior Hemingway hustling downfield to make the special teams tackle. Terrific start for the Chiefs as Charles celebrates his score. He was sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. Seahawks getting a taste of their own medicine. It is loud here in Kansas City. From the 10-yard line, it's Marshawn Lynch. And he takes it out across the 20. Finally tackled by Tom Bahali, gain of 10. And I know it's early in the game right now, but this is a critical response for this Seattle offense. And what a better guy to give it to you than really the heart and soul, the emotional leader of this offense. Get this guy on track. He is physical. He sets the tone, sets the tempo for this team. A change at right tackle, Gary Gilliam, rookie out of Penn State, in for Justin Britt, who went off the field following that last play. This is Lynch again. Marshawn Lynch out to the 28. I thought they had him stopped in the backfield on that last play. He's not just a power runner downhill. Watch his feet. I mean, he's very impressive. And defensive coordinator Bob Sutton for the Kansas City Chiefs talked about that. You know, Marshawn Lynch is not just a physical running back. He is a complete running back. He thinks he's great as a receiver out of the backfield. They'll open up formations and, and put Marshawn Lynch out on the outside. Great in pass protection. He does everything well that you need a running back to do in an offense. Made 140 yards against the Giants last Sunday with four touchdowns. Brent back in at right tackle. It's just one play, and this is Lynch running right as another Seattle first down. Out to the 41-yard line. I was talking to Kenny Norton before the game, and one of the things he told me is he goes, when Marshawn Lynch runs, and I want you to watch him, watch his base. When contact comes up, watch him steady his base and get square. He says his feet never get crossed where they're kind of front and back. He's got them side to side straddle, so he's got that real firm base on contact. So he's really hard to move off of a spot. 
Ken Norton, the Seahawks linebackers coach, old teammate, only player to win three straight Super Bowls. We reminisce about that on the field today. From the 41-yard line, it's Lynch up the middle. So a steady dose of Marshawn Lynch on this second Seahawks possession. Well, it was critical. They needed to come out and respond offensively. You go back to a couple of their losses early this year, San Diego and Dallas. Not a lot of snaps for the Seattle offense in those two games. The drive that Kansas City had, the way they controlled that clock, all of a sudden, oh boy, here we go again. We got to get out there. We got to make a first down. We got to get our offense rolling, get some opportunities. Robert Turbin replaces Lynch from the 45-yard line. This is Turbin. Turbin out to the 49. Time for a game break for Los Angeles. Kurt Menefee. Kurt. Houston's Ryan Mallett's first NFL touchdown pass to J.J. Watt. Two-yard catch. His fourth touchdown this season. Second receiving for Watt. Houston up 7-0 in Mallett's first NFL start. Kenny Moose and Goose. Wow, J.J. Watt doing it during an odd-numbered week. He usually scores on even-numbered weeks. Hey, the guy is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Those defensive linemen are very athletic. It's amazing. His fourth touchdown this season. Third down and two for the Seahawks. Low snap, and then Wilson able to get it to Turbin, and he picks up a first down into Kansas City Chiefs territory. So the Seahawks with one minute remaining in the quarter on the move following the Chiefs nine minute touchdown drive. Herbin remains in. Three receivers to the right. Pull Seattle. On first down, it's Turbin. To the Chiefs, 44, and a three. Uh, you, you see this zone read style of, of run here, and you've got your open formation, you've got trips out to the right. You try to reduce the numbers inside in the box count for that play. Kansas City does a good job. Just six guys in there. Remember, you're always plus one. Tony mentioned the fact with Russell Wilson there. You, it may be one running back in the backfield, but there's really two because you've got Russell Wilson back there that you have to account for. Second down at eight. First quarter winding down. The handoff to Turbin. Turbin to the 43. Wrapped up by Alan Bailey, who signed the contract extension yesterday. What a drive for the Chiefs. 15 plays. Jamal Charles into the end zone. 7-0 KC. We start the second quarter in Kansas City. Third down and seven for the Seahawks. Seattle must get to the 37-yard line, and they do. First down for the tight end, Luke Wilson. That nice. offensive line does a nice job of just clocking up that whole middle there, Moose. Yeah, yeah, Luke Wilson, though, he's going to be uh, a little bit of a late release here, a little bit on Justin Houston. That delay right there gets dropped in coverage. Eric Berry just a little bit late recognizing that. But one of the things I really enjoy about Seattle's offense, their wide receiver group, Jermaine Kirsch, number 15, downfield, running around. As soon as he sees his teammate with the ball, turn and find someone to block. That play of the drive with an extra blocker, Billy, and the handoff to Lynch. And he goes nowhere, loses a couple. Jay Howard coming up to make the tackle. Well, the Seahawks certainly used to the noise when they play at home. But now getting a taste of it on the road. A lot of 12th man flags all over the stadium, too. They, they uh, traveled pretty well here to Kansas City, Seattle. Former division rivals until the Seahawks moved to the NFC in 2002. On second and 12, Wilson chased by Holly and he throws it away. 
combination of Tapa Holly and Justin Houston with the pressure on Russell Wilson. But well, one of the things that jumps out at you when you're watching film on this defense is their screen recognition. This is going to be a screen to Marshawn Lynch out the backside. Uh, Dontari Poe recognizes it immediately. Justin Houston recognizes it immediately. There's nowhere for Russell Wilson to go with the ball. If you're going to screen this defense, you're going to have to execute almost perfectly because they have keys that they read. And I have not seen anybody on film have a lot of success with the screenplay against Kansas City's defense. Third down and 12. Wilson shoves it to his left, hit, loses the football. Seahawks have recovered. The right tackle, Brent. And there is a flag. Penalty marker at the 30-yard line. Good job by the coverage on the back end for Kansas City. That allows the de the Ill D line. of the hands to the face, number 38 defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's on the former Seattle Seahawk, number 38, Ron Parker. Got the hands up on Paul Richardson. So a big penalty it gives the Seahawks an automatic first down. Chiefs with a 7-0 lead. The first quarter, Darrell took 25 minutes of real time. That was a very, very impressive drive by the Chiefs' offense, but, you know, hats off to Seattle's offense right here. It was critical for them to come out and respond to that Kansas City drive. They could ill afford a 3-and-out or short possession at that time. They went 3-and-out of their opening possession, coming up the 12th play of the drive. From the 31, Wilson makes the handoff and then throws. A nice tackle on the tight end. Helfit is made by Eric Berry. Eric Berry getting back into the lineup. There you see him, number 29. Look at the range. We talk about Earl Thomas in his range. There's some nice range by Eric Berry as well. It's nice seeing a nice open field tackle. The guy goes down low, takes his legs out, wraps up. You see that very often. Anymore. Barry, the three time Pro Bowl safety, holding Helfit to a gain of just two. Second down and eight from the 29. Wilson to the near side and breaking free is Curse. Jermaine Curse takes it all the way down to the Chiefs' five yard line. That's a big gamble by Ron Parker right there. You've got to know that you can get to the ball. I mean, he's going to play right here on the slot. He's going to jump this thing that he can make the deflection, and then he leaves himself in a terrible spot to finish the tackle. Parker moving from safety to left corner today for the injured. Ralph Fleming, first game 24. First and goal from the Kansas City five. Play clock winding down. Now Wilson throws. It's Doug Baldwin. But he's tackled for a loss of three by Philip Gaines. Now there it is again, trying to, you know, a different type of screen on the outside. And Kansas City just excellent at their recognition. They're watching the linemen leave. You've got to really sell that. And when you're getting onto the outside like that, that tackle has to leave a little bit earlier. He's got to get wide quick to get support for that wide receiver on that screen. It's a huge tell for that defense. Remember, the Chiefs have not allowed a rushing touchdown this season at the backfield for the Seahawks. 15th play of the drive. Second and goal from the eight. Wilson moving to his left. And finding one, and he's out of bounds. Just inside the eight-yard line, so it will be third and goal for Seattle. That's one of the big things you have to be aware of. You can do a nice job in coverage, which Kansas City does right here on the releases, but look, everything went to the inside. That means Russell Wilson. Normally, how many times have we seen him come out to that edge, that perimeter, and have no defender out there and have a walk into the end zone? Receiver 
Rodgers to the right. Play clock at one. Seahawks get the snap away in time. Wilson rolling right. Now he throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Doug Baldwin. Touchdown, Seattle. That's a, it's a big challenge against Seattle's offense because when the play breaks down, what they do such a good job of is the scramble drill. You see right there, Doug Baldwin's supposed to be going to the corner. He's covered. He turns around. He sees that the play has broken down and that Russell Wilson is scrambling. And look at him move into that open spot. Second touchdown reception of the season for Baldwin. Adds the extra point. So the Seahawks answer the Chiefs with a nine-minute drive of their own, a season-long 16-play drive for Seattle. This game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By the new comedy Horrible Bosses 2 in theaters November 26th. And by Microsoft Service, the official tablet of the NFL. Wrapping up some barbecue in Kansas City with the Seahawks and Chiefs tied at seven. Longest drive of the season for Seattle. So both teams with nine-minute scoring drives today. That's a tremendous response by the Seattle offense because you have that big opening drive by Kansas City that takes a ton of time off that clock. And all of a sudden, you come out as an offense and you struggle a little bit and put your defense right back out on the field. It's tough for them. So... Well done by Seattle's offense. Back-to-back nine-minute drives. That's, a, that's, that's impressive. It's so hard to do in today's NFL to methodically move down the field without having a penalty or, or some kind of situation that derails that drive. Right at seven in Kansas City. Have a little problem, a little problem holding that ball on that tee. Kickers, well, they don't understand how hard that ball is sometimes, man. It's trying to put it straight up and down, it just keeps falling over. I mean, that's almost looks like it's falling forward. I mean, he's got to at least be, you know, like straight like that. It's almost leaning forward like that. Go out there and help him out a little bit, Kenny. Must be the ball. Must have been top-heavy, so they changed that up. Get going here in a minute, guys. 19 degrees at kickoff today. A college game scheduled for Arrowhead yesterday was relocated so that they could keep the field covered all day. Light snow yesterday morning. Ball stays on the tee. And the Chiefs will start at their 20. Andy Reid's Chiefs with a terrific drive earlier before Russell Wilson and the Seahawks answered. Early second quarter in Kansas City. Chiefs and Seahawks tied at seven. From the 20 on first down, Smith looking to throw. And the catch is made by the tight end, Kelsey, for a first down out to the 43-yard line. A 23-yard connection. I you think both of these offenses would really be able to take advantage of the play-action pass game. You've got to respect both of these running games so much. And Travis Kelsey finds that opening on that intermediate area. Chiefs picked up seven first downs on 15 plays on their opening possession. From the 43, up the gut, Jamal Charles. Charles inside the 30 for the Seattle 28-yard line. Finally tackled by Cam Chancellor. Charles gains 29. And we've seen the play to DeAnthony Thomas already in this game. Watch number 13. He's going to flash. You have to respect that. Everybody slides a little bit. And then there goes Jamal Charles right up the field. Travis Kelsey after the big catch downfield, throwing a block to spring him a little bit farther. 
So two big plays to start this drive for the Chiefs. Charles replaced by Thomas. From the Seattle 29. Smith over the middle to the fullback, Sherman. There you go, Moose. You don't see that very often, the fullback out of the backfield catching a nice ball. Yes, Tony, that would be the reigning AFC <laughs> Special Team of the Week player, Anthony Sherman, fullback for the Kansas City Chiefs. Affectionately known as Sausage by Andy Reid. And that would also be the longest reception for Sausage in his four-year <laughs> career. 13 yards. Got a chance to chat with Sausage the other day. Uh, he, he, you know exactly what position he plays when he walks in the room. I thought he was Jay Glazer when I first met him. Speaks the same way, looks just like him. There's a little bit more muscle. From the 16, it's Charles into the end zone. His second touchdown today. Wow, what a what a difference in scoring drives for the Kansas City Chiefs. Methodical, long on that opening drive in this time explosive pass game run game boy Andy Reid really had the Seattle defense on their heels on that one Jamal Charles with more touchdowns than any other NFL player over the last two seasons he has two today Chiefs with touchdowns on each of their first two possessions. Game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Find the best deals at PizzaHut.com. First scoring drive for the Chiefs took over nine minutes. This one just over two. And Jamal Charles for the first time in his career, two rushing touchdowns in the first half. Well, the Chiefs now lead 14-7. Doug Baldwin on the return for Seattle. Baldwin stopped just shy of the 20. Two Chiefs possessions. Two touchdowns for Jamal Charles. Touchdowns on three straight possessions. Chiefs with a 14-7 lead. Seahawks start from their 19. Marshawn Lynch, nothing. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown and see how they did this formation. We're going to get a motion right here and then watch the reaction here and then Cam Chancellor is going to come and then leave. That running play is going right back to where everybody left. So by the motion and a rotation in the secondary, Seattle left themselves vulnerable to that run into the boundary. Right, trying to protect that wide side of the field. They left themselves short into the boundary. Second and ten. Snap. Wilson throws on second down. It is Curse who makes the catch out of the 37 yard line. Jermaine Curse gaining 18 on a Seahawks first down. That's good chemistry right there with Russell Wilson and Jermaine Curse. Back shoulder throw, well executed. Stop for Rob Parker in that situation to be able to make a play. That's just good execution offensively. They're just attacking Ron Parker out there. Yeah, you know, keep going at him. He's had yeah. a tough stretch here the last drive and a half. Touchdown pass. Legal hands to the face that extended that drive on the third down stop. Bills kept attacking Parker at the end of the game last week. And he won most of the battles. Pass tip. Second and ten upcoming. Time for a game break with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, Kenny, let's check out another Kenny in St. Louis. It's Kenny Britt, 63-yard TD catch from Sean Hill. By the way, that's Sean Hill's first TD pass since 2012 with Detroit. 10-0 the Rams over Denver. Back to Kansas City, Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Joel. So Sean Hill replaces Austin Davis as the starter for the Rams. And they're out to a 10-0 lead over Denver. Second and ten, this is Lynch to the outside. 
Marshawn Lynch has a Seattle first down to the 48. Finally, bring down by Eric Berry. Tried to get into the psyche of Russell Wilson. And what do you see? What are you looking at when you're doing the zone read? And he goes, I just see in the area if anybody has the opportunity to tackle Marshawn Lynch. And to me, that would mean I'm going to give it to him every time. Because even if it looks like they can tackle Marshawn Lynch, I don't know if they're going to tackle Marshawn Lynch. Well, he can't be tackled now. He's on the sidelines, replaced by Kristen Michael. We finished with a career-high 71 yards on the ground last week. And the win over the Giants, and this play is well in. False start. Five-yard penalty, first out. You go into this zone read, and you're wondering what Russell Wilson is looking at. Is it the defensive end? Is there a linebacker straight that you're trying to read to see? Are you just seeing if you can out-leverage, out-flank somebody? And he's like, you know what? You guys are making it too hard. I just, I look at that area, and if I don't think they can tackle Marshawn Lynch, I'm giving it to him. And you, know, you, you can just see this offense. When, when Marshawn Lynch is running and setting that tone, it, it, it starts to feed off of that. Empty backfield following the penalty. First down and 15. Quick release for Richardson. And he turns on the Jets, takes it into Chiefs territory to the Kansas City. 47, a gain of 8 for the speedster out of Colorado. And that's well done. We, we talked about how well Kansas City's defense does against the screen. And that little bubble screen, screen quick to the outside to the wide receiver is effective that time for Seattle. Five minutes remaining, second quarter, second down and seven. Seahawks send in two tight ends, Helfit and the ex-chief Tony Moyaki. On second down, it's Lynch up the middle, stumbles forward and picks up a Seahawks first down to the Chiefs, 39. Again, showing you how complete a running back he is. You know, the, the perimeter play now, the downhill play, but it's the feet again. Look at the cut. He does a great job of reading his offensive linemen. As soon as one of them turns their body to the side, he cuts right off their butt and does a great job downhill. Talk about arm tackling that guy. I'm telling you, when he hits the line of scrimmage, he's in a different zone. Averaging over six yards per carry today, Goose. New set of downs. For the Seahawks, it's Lynch again, inside the 30 to the 25. Another first down for Marshawn Lynch, he gains 14. Here he comes, just coming right through here, and, and, and we talk about running backs making them change their direction, and Max Unger, tremendous job from the center position, pulling out, getting the linebacker, and, and there's, a, there's a huge addition. We talked about Seattle getting guys back in their lineup, Max Unger getting back last week. And, and the big thing is you can make the calls along that front as a center, but everybody in the offense said when, when Max Unger makes the call, we have confidence that it's right. He's just such, he's so de you know, decisive in what he's doing there on the offensive line. He had missed three games, returned last Sunday. This is Michael, and he runs right into the arms of Jay Howard. The former Seahawk. Russell Wilson handled that one off, but nobody was on him at all. Watching the backfield here. Watch if Russell Wilson keeps this ball right now. Boom, he's to the outside. He might still be running. They're zoning in on those running backs right now. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Russell Wilson go and take the ball in the next time. Second down and 11. Seahawks sent out four wide receivers, empty backfield. Ninth play of the drive. Play clock winding down. And Wilson attempted to call timeout, and it looks like it was granted. Timeout Seattle before the snap. Play clock was down to one. Seahawks use their first timeout. Today's game is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Well, earlier this season, the fans here at Arrowhead set a new Guinness World Record, breaking the record held by the Seahawks home crowd. Loudest crowd roar at an outdoor sports stadium. So 
Now the Seattle and Kansas City fans have gone back and forth as far as who holds the record. Second down and 12. Wilson can't find anyone. Inside the 20 to the 15 and out of bounds at the 12 yard line. So Wilson able to pick up a first down as he gains 14. Yeah, it's a nice job in the coverage downfield, but again, we talked about what that allows to happen. There's nobody there on the edge, and it's big Dontari Poe, number 92, who's going to work from the inside all the way across the field to force Russell Wilson out of bounds. Good hustle by the big man. Yeah, he, he, he changed his angle of pursuit, too, man. He was trying. Clock winds down towards the two-minute warning. Wilson handing it off to Lynch, and he is forced back. Loose a couple, Justin Houston with the penetration. We have hit the two-minute warning here at Arrowhead with the Chiefs leading the Seahawks by seven. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Following the two-minute warning, Chiefs with a 14-7 lead. Second down and 13 for the Seahawks. Lynch stays on his feet. And is down just inside the 15-yard line. Kevin Dickerson, former Seahawk, on the tackle. A good job on that play by Kansas City's front of not allowing Marshawn Lynch with the cutback. And, and what they're doing right now, and Coach Sutton talked to his guys about this, make them block you, don't let them zone you. Now the difference in that is the zone, you're gonna be able to scoop block, you're gonna be able to have two guys working on one guy, climbing up to the second level. He wanted one-on-one -on -one battles. Create a one-on-one -on -one battle up front. Don't allow Seattle's offensive line to climb up to our linebacker level and get to that second, that second group. Chiefs use their first timeout and stop the clock with a minute 48 remaining. There's a halftime report coming up with Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. J.J. Watt with his fourth touchdown of the season for the Texans. We'll take you through all the scores and highlights. Third down and 12 for Seattle. Seahawks must get to the three for a first down. Wilson throws. The catch is made at the six-yard line by Richardson. Three yards shy of a first. And the Chiefs use their second timeout. To Los Angeles, Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll get you caught up on all eight early games, including Who Day versus Who Act, as the Bengals take on the Saints. J.J. Watt with another can't-miss touchdown catch in Cleveland, and the Rams with yet another early lead, but this time over Peyton Manning and the Broncos. It's all coming your way on the Visa Halftime. Thanks, Kurt, and that St. Louis-Denver score, certainly good news for the Chiefs. Broncos at 7-2, Chiefs 6-3. In the AFC West, here is the Seahawks field goal unit, 24-yard attempt for Hauska. Third most accurate field goal kicker in NFL history. From the right hash, John Ryan places it down. Hauska's kick is good, pulling the Seahawks to within four. Late second quarter here in KC. Seattle struggling with their passing game, and Russell Wilson says it's on me, and here's an example. These are clear routes for Paul Richardson to come across and use his speed to run away. The ball's thrown down low. He's got to go dig it out. If you give that to him in stride, he has the opportunity, if not to get in for the touchdown, to convert the first down, but because he's got to go dig that ball out, I think that's one of those situations where Russell says, hey, a lot of this is on me. I just I haven't been as accurate as I would like to. Kyle Davis. Across the 30 to the 35, big return. Chiefs with a minute 32 and one timeout remaining. 38 yards on the return by Davis. 
two first half possessions for the Kansas City Chiefs, two touchdowns. But we talked about Kansas City playing good complementary football offense, defense, all three phases contributing. Niall Davis's return puts you in a position to get maybe more points here on your last drive. There is a flag. Smith hit as he throws. Movement prior to the snap. It's against Seattle. Outside. Number 51 defense. Five yard penalty. First down. Bruce Irvin. So Kansas City with one timeout. A big return by Niles Davis on the kickoff. So the Chiefs following the penalty. First and five on their 41. Charles with a pair of touchdowns. Smith looked to throw on first down. Well, it looked like Byron Maxwell was there early against Wayne Bow. He was there early. He ran right in him. Working out of the slot right here. Yeah. Got away with that one. Bo without a catch today. In fact, no completions have gone to the wide receivers. But that trend continues. A hard score touchdown on that throne is he? Second down and five. Smith to the outside looking for the tight end. Kelsey. Now, I think that one was just good defense by Malcolm Smith. He's just right on top of him. There is no contact. Let's see how this one looks in replay. Well, <laughs> could have had a hold. He was on it because he was latched onto him. Malcolm Smith, the Super Bowl 48 MVP, returning today after missing the last two due to a groin injury. Now third down and five for Andy Reid's Chiefs. I think Andy's sliding over the next to the official to, to talk to him a little bit before this play. Smith on third down. It's Kelsey. It's close. Ball came loose. And it is Seahawks football. Let's see what happens at the end. Didn't look like any body part was down. He was on top of K.J. Wright, so I don't think Travis Kelsey was down. It's the hit by Earl Thomas right on the ball at first. Well, he was ruled down. Remember, we're in the final two minutes, so all reviews must come from upstairs, and Bill Levy will take a look at it. Seahawks called a timeout to give the officials some more time prior to the snap. Initially, they, they said it was going to be Seattle ball. Let's see if he... That certainly looks like he came loose while he was on top of Earl Thomas. Recovery by Jordan Hill. Initial signal was Seahawks football, but that it was given back to the Chiefs. Ball came out, the recovery by Hill. So Bill Levy has gone under the hood. Mike Pereira in Los Angeles uh, what he saw in that last play Mike 
Well, what I see is he's not down by contact. You're going to watch him roll over bodies here, and then the ball's going to get knocked out as he's rolling over the Seattle player before the right elbow hits. So you have a fumble, and you do have a clear recovery by Seattle at that point there. So you give the ball to Seattle. The other part that they'll look at, was it indeed a catch? Because, as you know, it's this whole process thing. But he gets both feet on the ground, turns up field, the brace for the contact, rolls over. That's enough for a football act, in my opinion. So to me, I think you're looking at a catch, fumble, recovery by Seattle. They will give the ball to Seattle. Thanks, Mike. The Seahawks offense has come out onto the field. Here comes referee Bill Levy. After reviewing the play, the runner was not down, and he did fumble, recovered by Seattle on the 47-yard line. With the game clock operator put 109 on the game clock, and Seattle is not charged that last time out. Thank you. It is only the ninth turnover committed by the Kansas City Chiefs this season. Well, they followed that suit. We talked about it at the top. They're the least penalized team in the league. They do a great job. They don't turn the ball over. Number three in that situation. Third downs, offensively and defensively, very good. Red zone touchdown percentage, offensive and defensively, very good. They've kind of followed that model today. Seattle's done a nice job converting on third down, but they've done a good job in the red zones today. So a big opportunity for the Seahawks following the Chiefs' turnover. A minute nine remaining, Seattle with two timeouts. First and ten from the Kansas City 47th. Wilson has it. Off the fake to Lynch, and Russell Wilson has a first down to the Chiefs 34. Yeah, and it, you know, we're waiting for this. You're giving it, you're giving it, you're giving it. Eventually, you got to slide, right? you got to get in there and play. And outflanked immediately. You know, Russell Wilson has got you out leveraged very quickly. Yeah, those coaches up in the box, they've been watching that the whole time, that defensive end. If he comes in, yeah, push it down to Wilson. Wilson. Down the hill to hold it. Game 13, and now he fires downfield out of the reach of Baldwin. You put it in a position where you don't want to turn the ball right back over to Kansas City, so could have been a little bit more to the middle of the field, but good coverage by Philip Gaines on Doug Baldwin on that play. 39 seconds remaining. Seattle still with two timeouts. Second and ten, Turbin in the backfield. Wilson on second down, under pressure, gets rid of it, finds Baldwin, has a first down, and he is unable to get out of bounds, tackled by Parker, and now the Seahawks use their second timeout. That's a nice job by Doug Baldwin, right, right at the release, he's going to be working inside here, watch him on the release, he's got the press with Ron Parker, look at that separation, immediately, by Doug Baldwin. And then Parker kept him in bounds, forcing Seattle to use a timeout. That's a great hustle by Parker going and back on him in bounds. One last timeout. Yep, 29 seconds remaining. Now they've added two seconds, so it's back up to 31. Seattle with a first and 10 from the Kansas City 23. Seahawks looking to capitalize following the Kansas City turnover. This is just a really good, quick decision by Russell Wilson. It's going to be play action. They've got Kansas City Chief defenders that are breaking through right away. As soon as he sets his foot, he sees its man coverage, and he sees his pocket is collapsing. So he just pulls it down and takes off. Russell Wilson down with 41 yards on the ground on four carries. First and goal from the nine. 22 seconds on the clock, Seahawks out of timeouts. 
I think Russell Wilson does a really nice job, too, of knowing when to get down. He, he's not pressing for that extra yard. He understands what type of collision can happen to him out in the open field, how important he is to this offense. One, one of the best I've seen at the quarterback position of, of knowing when he's pushed it to the max and he can get down and, and be safe on that snap. And he knows how to slide. He played minor league baseball. First and goal from the Kansas City Nine. Three receivers to the right. Wilson looking left. He throws. Nobody in the vicinity. Elfit was cutting the other way. And there is a flag. Justin Houston looked back, saw nobody in the area, told the official, wanted to know why that was not intentional grounding. It's really just a miscommunication. I think if you look at the play, it looks like Cooper Helfit went to the middle of the field as opposed to the corner. So it's one of these situations by the design of the rule. Yeah, it, it could be intentional grounding because there is no area. They're going in the area. Teams. Illegal to the hands. Number 23 defense. Intentional grounding. Number three of the offense. The penalty's offset. Replay first out. Well, the illegal use of hands call on games. Offsetting penalties. First and goal from the nine with 18 seconds remaining, second quarter. Ball put in the slot, three receivers set. Wilson fires. Zone and it's incomplete. Broken up by Sean Smith. Pass intended for Jermaine Curse. And I think this is a drop by Jermaine Curse. Let's see at the end of this. It is good coverage, but again, it's that back shoulder fade and it's executed very well. Sean Smith does a nice job getting that left hand in there, but Jermaine Curse has to finish that play. It's right there for him for the touchdown. Second and goal with 13 seconds. The backfield, two tight ends, three receivers to the right. Wilson fires, end zone incomplete, looking for Curse again. Put the trips out to the field. Got your double tight end on the back side. Nice pressure right up at the middle by Kansas City's defensive line. All right, now they, they have Paul Richardson on the outside. On that last snap, 81, Kevin Norwood was left uncovered. Andy Reid calls timeout. Timeout, Kansas City. Reid headed down the sideline, saw something he did not like. Chiefs on their opening drive. The ball draws, takes it in. Nine-minute drive by Kansas City, but then the Seahawks would come back with a nine-minute drive of their own. Wilson to Doug Baldwin, and then Charles with his second touchdown of the first half. Chiefs got the ball back with under two minutes remaining, but Travis Kelsey had it knocked free, recovered by the Seahawks, so now Pete Carroll's club with nine seconds remaining. In the second quarter, facing a third and goal from the nine. Wilson has already taken two shots. The curse in the end zone. And they should have had him on the one. To make curse just needed to complete it. They're going into that same formation again. Paul Richardson on the outside. We saw this earlier in the red zone when Russell Wilson threw it low. There's Wilson on third down, backpedaling. Now throws and Lynch turned the other way. With Abdullah. On the coverage, so the Seahawks will send out the field goal unit. That's a nice job by Kansas City's defense, forcing the field goal attempt right here. Good coverage by the linebackers and the secondary. Nowhere for Russell Wilson to go as he drifts to his left. He's moving to the side where it's just Marshawn Lynch working that side. So again, Kansas City's defense very good in the red zone TD percentage this season, forcing another field goal attempt here for Seattle. 
Hauschka hit from 24 earlier. This a 27-yard attempt from the left hash. Placed down by Ryan. And Hauschka's kick is straight through as the first half comes to an end. So the Seahawks score three following the Kansas City turnover. A one-point lead for the Chiefs at the half. Both teams with six and three records. Chiefs have won four in a row. Seahawks three straight. It's Kansas City by one. We'll return to Arrowhead in just a moment. We get set for the second half here in Kansas City. Chiefs lead the Seahawks by one. Today's excitement is brought to you by Nissan. A lot of excitement in the first half for Jamal Charles. Yeah, excellent half by Jamal Charles, but some concern for the Seattle Seahawks and their star running back, Marshawn Lynch, never went to the locker room during halftime, stayed out on the field. They were working on his hip and his groin area, low back. As physical as he runs, do you think it could be this? A stumble and a trip? Near the end of that first half, he went to the sideline after that. You can obviously see he's in a little bit of discomfort right there. So we'll keep an eye on Marshawn Lynch when the Seahawk offense comes back on the field. He was listed as questionable as recently as Friday with half and rib injuries. Thomas on the return for the Chiefs. Kansas City deferred at the start of the game, so they get the ball first here in the second half. Do you expect more of what we saw in the first half from both clubs? I hope so. It was an enjoyable first half. You know, I, I think what we thought was going to happen, the one thing that's uncharacteristic, the very end of that first half, the turnover by Kansas City that gave Seattle that extra possession to get the field goal. Other than that, I thought it was played exactly how we thought. Both teams out rushing uh, their passing totals in the first half. So Seattle, Kansas City, exactly what we thought. Like how he said, it's like 1980 again. When they were division rivals in the AFC West, and now he, of course, in that division as well with the Raiders. From the 28-yard line, the play is long dead movement prior to the snap. Neutral zone infraction. Number 99 defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's uh, Tony McDaniel. Goose. Hey, you know what's pretty funny, Moose, that you said that. I spoke to both of these coaches. They're pretty happy with the way things went in the first half. Andy Reid said, listen, one thing we can go and improve on is the penalties. They, he was upset that his team had the penalties and, and offset a few of them. When I ran out with Pete Carroll at halftime, he was eager to come out here. And we know that Marshawn Lynch, you know, stayed out. And, uh, he wanted to go and see how he was feeling. He got some chiropractic, and they stretched him a little bit. But he was really concerned to see how he was feeling if he would go in the second half, so. Hey, you wonder sometimes, you know, the guys, we always worried about the heated benches on a cold day. He didn't really want to get on those because they're difficult to get off. And you, and you wondered, you know, if he was taking that to the next step where he just didn't want to go in at halftime and stay out here and stay in the elements he was going to be in in the second half. But he's, he's up and moving around a little bit. I don't know. you got to be pretty hurt if it was me. I'm going in to get warmed up. <laughs> we get inside. I'm not, I'm not staying out here in this. I can barely feel my toes. Woo. You might not make it back out for the second half. That's, That's true. Here's Thomas. I'll tell you what, that guy is exciting, and that's Bruce Irvin coming from the inside out. Has a shot at DeAnthony Thomas, but just so quick. Watch the bounce back. Ball's out there quickly. Here comes number 51 from Seattle trying to squeeze him to the sideline, but boy, he got on the edge, and that, that's dangerous right there for Seattle. Anthony Thomas, who played in Snoop Dogg's Pop Water League at the age of 12, played for the Crenshaw Bears. There's Marshawn Lynch. On the sidelines. Hey, kill, kill, kill. Nobody. Thomas comes in motion and takes the handoff from Smith. We saw that play in the first half, and Thomas takes it to the 
44-yard line for a gain of seven. And this is uh, he's fun to watch, and and he's he's supposed to be uh, you know full of confidence. He 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 goes into the running back room. He tells the guys, when I was in Oregon, I was never tackled. I've run out of bounds a few times. <laughs> I've landed on the field with nobody around me, but I was never tackled at Oregon. We'll have to ask Chip Kelly next yeah, time we we'll see him. So, Got to go back and through the field. Second down and three inside handoff and Jamal Charles has a Chiefs first down to the Seahawks 39. And you just start to wonder the impact of Brandon Meebane not being out there. And, and not necessarily production standpoint. Yeah, he's one sack, 20 tackles through the season so far, but just such an integral part in so many other ways as a leader on that defense. He was an upfield guy. Just He would just blow up plays in the backfield in the middle of that defense. Well, he's the kind of guy that's smart and lets everybody else know in line of scrimmage what they're going to get. You know, he would point out where, where the ball's going to be run. I mean, that guy is, is tough to replace. It's the six-time Pro Bowler, Kevin Williams, 12-year vet, in for B-Bain. On the end around, it's Thomas. And Thomas takes it to the Seattle 33, finally tackled by K.J. Wright. Another gain of seven. He forces your defense to be true assignment-wise from sideline to sideline. He, he's really going to stretch the perimeter of this defense. And, and you can sit there and focus on Jamal Charles and be worried about him off the edges and inside the tackles. And then all of a sudden, here comes number 13, DeAnthony Thomas, and, and he's got that speed to get all the way out on the outside of the numbers. Extra blocker, Stevenson, second down and three. The handoff to Charles up the middle for a first down to the Seattle 25. Seems like the play is inside play, then an outside play. Inside play, and then an edge play. Yeah. They're mixing it up pretty good, pretty good right here. And they're doing a good job because Seattle's got extra players down there. You can see Camp Chancellor there, number 31. He guesses wrong. Jamal Charles is coming back to the area that he vacated. But you've, you've got your big physical safety down in the mix, and Kansas City's still running the ball effectively inside. Wayne Bowe still looking for his first reception today. Each leading receiver, first and 10, 25-yard line. There's Bowe. His first catch to the Seattle 15, close to a first down. But that's a nice that's a nice disguise of the play because watch, you're thinking about this little drop back screen and then you've got slant right there. So you see DeAnthony Thomas pop back and look at the void that it opens up for Dwayne Bowe to get in behind. Second down and one. Bowe split. Wide to the left. Charles in the backfield. Thomas comes in motion. And this is Charles. And he has yet another Chiefs first down. You can see the other guy Seattle missing right now. Bobby Wagner, their middle linebacker. He'll be back next week. You know, that, that ability to go side to side from that middle linebacker position is something that Seattle will get back next week when Bobby Wagner gets there. But it, this is this is a real challenge that Kansas City is putting on this defense. They, they have to defend from number to number right now. From the Seahawks 12, Smith out of the shotgun, handing it off to Charles. And this time, Charles gains one down to the Seahawks 11. Tony McDaniel, the tackle. Early third quarter in Kansas City. 19 degrees at kickoff. Charles with both Chiefs touchdowns. They lead by one. As Lynch waits his turn. Big snap here for the Seattle defense. If they can have some success here, force a third and long situation. Charles over 100 yards on the ground on his last carry. Now Davis... In the backfield, 10th play of the drive for the Chiefs. On second and nine, Smith sets up the screen. It's Davis, and Davis makes it all the way down to the two. 
Uh, it's just a nice job on these screens. We saw them downfield early in the first half. Now they're, they're going to pop out this way. You're going to have Rodney Hudson coming outside to kick out, and you're going to have Zach Fulton down the field, athletic by the interior lineman for the Kansas City Chiefs. And now Kansas City sending in those big bodies, but now they're coming off the field. They sent in Lincoln Bach and Stevenson. They head off. The fullback Sherman comes in. It is third and short from just inside the three. And the play clock down to one. They had some problems with personnel shuffling guys in and out. And the Chiefs use a timeout. A third and short upcoming in honor of Veterans Day for every point scored during the NFL's 32 Salute to Service games. The league will donate $100 to each of its nonprofit partners, the Pat Tillman Foundation, USO, and Wounded Warrior Project. To join the salute and learn more, visit NFL.com slash salute. All great charities involving our men and women of the military, active and retired. I'm going to go on the website, Ken. I'm going to take a look at some of that game-worn stuff. Hey guys, just got a report on Marshawn Lynch. He's questionable right now with a right knee. All right, thanks, Goose. There's Lynch. We mentioned was listed as questionable all week. Gained 68 yards on the ground in the first half on 12 carries. Big play coming up for the Chiefs. Third down and one. you draw up here if you're Andy Reid? Uh, yeah, I'd be so confused on that first series when he was down here this end of the field. Uh, I'm just going to run the ball behind, uh, behind Anthony Sherman. It's Davis in the backfield. And this is Niall Davis, and he is stopped. Malcolm Smith, the first Seahawk to make contact. And he was downhill into the backfield right away. Come from that second level, gets in between. You've got the kick out by Sherman, but nobody accounts for Malcolm Smith, and he's got a clean run through. First negative rushing play for the Chiefs all day. Kansas City sends out the field goal unit, 23 yard attempt for Santos. A rookie out of Tulane who has connected on his last 10 attempts. Colquitt will place it down, and Santos makes it 11 consecutive field goals. Chiefs extend to a four-point lead. This game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Buy four. Beautiful things happen when you go further. By Burger King. Mix and match two large premium sandwiches for just $5 only at Burger King. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Arrowhead crew out nice and early today, getting some of the snow off the field. I mentioned earlier a college game scheduled for Arrowhead yesterday was moved to a campus location. Usually you see those big blowers behind cars with a NASCAR on Fox. Barry Landis doing a great job with that. Worth getting the snow off the field with the NASCAR track. <laughs> or producing his game. Both. Baldwin down at the 19-yard line. Midway through the third quarter in KC. Here comes Lynch. That beard keeping you warm, Goose? We lost Mo our November, baby, November. We lost our thermometer, so uh, Goose is filling in. That means it's uh, yeah. below 32. I know you guys are standing on your heating pads up there in that nice little warm box up there. The human thermometer. Yeah. Here's Lynch. Lynch out to the 24. K to 5. Good thing I guess stayed out during yeah. halftime and get all that work done. That questionable uh, really uh, went to probable really fast there, guys. Well, you know, it, it, you hear about knee, but you're, well, maybe, maybe not. He's jogging he just, off yeah, right now. Off. But it looked, it looked more hip-related, that hip, low back, groin area. Replaced by Kristen Michael, second down and five. 
Defending champion of the Seahawks, trailing by four. Off the fake to Michael, this is Kurtz. And he's tackled by Ron Parker. Still going at Ron Parker, guys. Yeah, but he makes a nice yeah, play here. Really nice open field tackle. Yeah, a couple of big guys watch to see the offensive lineman coming from the inside. Trying to go and lead him if he misses that. Breaks away from that first tackle. Third down and five for Seattle. We approach six minutes remaining, third quarter. Wilson on third down. He throws, it's Baldwin. And Baldwin is tackled by Philip Gaines. It will depend on the spot. Yeah, and if, if they're short, if they're just a little bit short, this is a heck of a tackle by Philip Gaines. Doug Baldwin is right at the marker. And he gains zero after the catch. But he was given forward progress. Seahawks awarded a first down. Fans not happy about it. Marshawn Lynch back in for the Seahawks. On first down, it's Lynch. Lynch gains a couple down to the 31. Josh Falk in the tackle. Marcus Dobbs, injured earlier, heading back out onto the field. Second down and nine. On the delay, Wilson looking to throw. But not finally it went downfield, takes a hard hit. At the 33-yard line from Kurt Coleman. Well, we talked about Russell being smart about when to take the hits. And now there's Kurt Coleman, 27. He's just going to hang right in that area. He's going to kind of force Russell Wilson into that tough spot, and he's going to get the last hit on him. But, you know, when he's running the ball, he gets down and gets safe. And here he takes, he takes a big hit from Kurt Coleman at the end of that play. Third down and eight. Seahawks must get to the 40 for a first. Play clock at two. Wilson under pressure from top of Holly. He takes him down. Back at the 30-yard line. Fifth sack of the season for Holly. Top of Holly does a nice job. He's going to come in from this side and continue to move all the way across the formation. Russell Wilson probably thinks he's got some daylight there, but good pursuit. Ryan back to punt for the second time. Chiefs have not punted all game. Thomas back deep. Nice punt. Thomas takes it out to 20. Comes away from Jeremy Lane up the sideline. The Anthony Thomas stays in bounds and takes it to the Seattle 40 yard line. And some extracurricular activity looked like Lockett took a swing. At one of the Chiefs, there is a flag following the 41-yard return by DeAnthony Thomas. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 83 of the kicking team. The player is ejected. Yeah, here's the yard penalty. Ricardo Lockett took a swing at one of the Chiefs on the sidelines. There it is at Kurt Coleman. Lockett ejected from the game. Today's game is sponsored by Exodus, Gods and Kings, December 12th, only in theaters. 
I tell you, one of the more thankless jobs in the NFL is the gunner position. And there goes Ricardo Lockett off the field. You're getting doubled on special teams, and sometimes it's just a long, long day at the office. And it's been that way for Ricardo Lockett. You watch what you go through. You're on the ground. You get back up. You're getting hit by the two guys again. You're fighting. You're working. You get all the way down, and you get in on the tackle. And you're just, your emotions get away from me for a split second because Kirk Coleman comes in, gives you a little shove, and pop. And you are out of the game, and that is it. Your day is over. Yeah, you got to control your emotions, man. That, that was a, uh, that was uncalled for. I mean, I know, it, and Dal, you did a great job of going describing it. It's very frustrating out there, especially when you got two on one. I mean, but uh, you got to control yourself, and uh, we're not going to see him anymore today. So lock it to the locker room. Now Bill Levy, the referee, has gone into the hood to check out the spot. Let's see if Thomas stepped out of bounds. Looks yeah. like he did. They will add the penalty yardage on to the end of the play. It was initially a 41-yard return, but like Thomas stepped out of bounds earlier. Yeah, it looks like we're looking might got might have got <laughs> three right there. Consecutive steps out of bounds. I was so impressed him working that sideline because he worked just the six yards. I mean he, he was about halfway to the numbers, went towards the middle of the field, came back, was able to get around and pick up some blockers and get down the sideline. In any event, it will be terrific field position for the Chiefs. Who lead by four. Chiefs have won four straight, six of their last seven. Denver trailing St. Louis, 13-7 in the third quarter. Broncos in first place in the AFC West at 7-2. Chiefs 6-3. Here's Bill Levy. After reviewing the play, the runner did step out of bounds at the 29-yard line. With the timer for 3-16 on the game clock. We will enforce the 15-yard penalty from the 29. 83 is still ejected. Well done by Bill Levy and his crew cleaning that one up right there. So the Chiefs lose 32 yards on the return, but they gain 15 on the penalty. So the ball will be spotted at their own 44. Late third quarter in Kansas City. 19 degree afternoon. Jamal Charles with both Kansas City touchdowns. He's got over 100 yards on the ground for the first time this season. And Charles has picked up a first down, Darrell, on 10 of his 13 carries today. And Smith hands it off to Charles. Looks to find his way back to the line of scrimmage. Ball comes loose. Officials trying to get to the bottom of the pile. Chiefs committed a turnover towards the end of the first half. Travis Kelsey and now Charles coughing it up for the third time this season. It's funny because we've had a couple of these during the course of the year. Bill Levy and his crew, they're going to get down. If they can get a clear visual on it, they don't need somebody to come out of the pile. But again, so uncharacteristic of Kansas City. They were the third best team in the NFL. They've had two critical turnovers near midfield this afternoon. After the Chiefs turned the ball over only five times in their last eight games to today. Byron Maxwell recovered the fumble, chatting with Richard Sherman. It was forced by Earl Thomas, second Kansas City turnover. A little yeah. discussion about what went on in that pile, it looks like, Moose. <laughs> <laughs> now, Earl Thomas lowered the boom on Jamal Charles on that play. Well, the Legion of Boom forcing a turnover. From the Kansas City 44, it's Lynch. Marshawn Lynch gaining six on first down. We talked about a critical series for the Seattle offense early in the game. After that long drive by Kansas City, they responded with a long drive of their own. And now we've got a critical series for the Kansas City defense. They, they were forced to do this at the end of the first half. They held Seattle to a field goal. Uh, they've got to try to at least do that again right here. They've got to get this momentum back to Kansas City. We'll see what Seattle's offense does here. 
Second down and four. Off the fake to Lynch. Wilson with time. Can't find their one downfield. Now he throws to a wide open Luke Wilson, the tight end. And he has a first down inside the Kansas City 15 to the 12. This is all Russell Wilson because it's a max route. It's, it's play action and it's max route. You've only got two receivers out. And you've got everything covered. Here comes Jermaine Curse across the formation covered. Your deep route is covered. Doug Baldwin's going to be covered down the field. And then Russell Wilson goes to look for his check down. He looks for Marshawn Lynch. He's not there. And now here comes Cooper Helfett out to the side. Justin Houston has him down the sideline, but it ends up being Luke Wilson who finally frees up, but that was all Russell Wilson. And now here is Lynch, takes it inside the five, and down to the four, that previous play, 27 yards from Wilson to Wilson, longest pass play of the day on either side. And you can't really defend it anymore, that's just, it's great athleticism. Russell Wilson puts a Number defender in, in a tough position, you're, you're covering Luke Wilson. And all of a sudden, here comes Russell Wilson out on the perimeter. You know that if he pulls the ball down, he's going to go for a big gain as well. Yeah, when you have that much time, that defensive line has got to go and bring the pass rush in. You can't give Russell Wilson that much time. He's going to find somebody down the field. On second down, it's Lynch. Lynch still on his feet. Wrapped up by five or six or seven Chiefs. He picks up a first down, but... Does not reach the goal line. He's even getting hit by his offensive lineman trying to push him into the Both end zone. Sides. Getting hit by everybody. <laughs> that J.R. Sweezy winds up at the bottom of that pile. <laughs> you know, watch right here. The Kansas City defense pushing him back, and there comes J.R. He just drills Marshawn trying to push him into the end zone. First and goal from the one. Off the fake to Lynch. Wilson to the end zone. It's the former Kansas City Chief, Tony Moyaki, with the Seahawks touchdown. Every offense in the NFL has this round. You get your tight end in the corner, your fullback in the flat, put your defenders in a tough position. And a nice throw by Russell Wilson. Moyaki's first reception as a Seattle Seahawk doing it against his former club. Third round pick by the Chiefs back in 2010. Houska for the extra point. The Seahawks have their first lead of the game. Wilson to Wilson, 27 yards. The big play. Setting up the Seattle touchdown. Tony Moyaki, his first touchdown since December of 2012 with the Chiefs, and it has given the Seahawks their first lead. Good game here in Kansas City. Seattle has now scored 10 points off the two Chiefs turnovers. Very uncharacteristic of Kansas City. Davis back deep for the Chiefs. 23 seconds on the clock, third quarter. And it was that big kickoff return by Niall Davis at the end of the first half that put Kansas City in the position to think about going down and getting points. And you blowing it off the tee from 45 yards back, Goose? I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of wind down here. It's amazing, you know, the flags are blowing way up top, but you know, it, there's nothing down here on the field that's pretty, pretty good, but... Uh, this might be the... The Chancellor's going to go and help him out a little bit. Biggest holder in league history. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't want Cam Chancellor holding the football. I want him covering the kick. Now Hauska boots it downfield. Take it by Davis at the five. And Niall Davis works his way out to the 29-yard line. 24 on the return following the hold by Cam Chancellor. I just always think of Charlie Brown and Lucy right in this situation. Look at that concentration by Cam Chancellor. He's got to get up and get down the field. Then he got to, let's go. Well, now it's Alex Smith onto the field. How about this? Both teams still with more rushing yards than passing yards today. 
That has not happened over the course of a full NFL game this season for both teams. In honor of Howie Long. On first down, it is Charles. Charles out across the 30 as time winds down in this third quarter on a 19-degree afternoon in Kansas City. Goose hanging in there downstairs. Darrell and I up in the booth. Three-point lead for the Seahawks. They've taken advantage of two Kansas City Chiefs turnovers. Seattle by three. Back in Kansas City with our entire Fox crew, producer Barry Landis, director Brian Lilly, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Siracusa. Three-point lead for the Seahawks. Alex Smith and the Chiefs. Second down to nine from their 30. New wide receiver set. Smith fires. There is a flag as the ball was intended for both. Two flags on the play. That was just a little switch at the snap. They sent Jamal Charles outside left. Anthony Thomas in the backfield. He got matched up with a linebacker, but had some safety help. Earl Thomas recognized it and dropped down to help out. Illegal's in the hands of the face, number 47. Holding, that penalty is declined. Holding, number 21, 41. That penalty be accepted, five yards. Previous spot, automatic first out. That's on Maxwell. Byron Maxwell on the hold in the slot. It's easy. I mean, it's the point of emphasis from the season. They call it real tight. I mean, anytime you have a hand full of jersey, you were just going to get the flag. They've loosened it a little bit as the season has progressed, but that was an easy one for Bill Levy and his crew. From the 35 on first down. Bow. Oh. Second catch for Dwayne Bow, the Chiefs leading receiver. Out to the 44, gain of nine. Working against Richard Sherman, who slid over to the right side. And that two wide receivers set on that side. Second down and one. Here's Charles, and he picks up his 11th first down today, and he keeps on running. Jamal Charles inside the 30, the 20. Finally knocked out of bounds. Oh, D'Anthony Thomas. This is fantastic. Unbelievable run. Oh, but you got to see the block. The, the, I mean, he's a little speed guy. Now there's a flag at the end of the play. Just watch... Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 51 defense. So it goes against Seattle. Watch 13 pull up into your screen. Watch the effort. That's Kim Chancellor. Look at Anthony Thomas working him down the sideline. That is tremendous hustle going up against one of the most physical safeties in the NFL. A 47-yard run, longest of the season for Charles. And then the personal foul, unnecessary roughness called on Bruce Irvin. So the ball has moved half the distance. It will be first and goal from the four. But he runs so up. He, runs, he looks like Eric Dickerson. I, I played with Eric Dickerson when I was with the Colts. I, I, he reminds me so much of him, just his running style. Charles down with 149 yards on the ground today, Goose. The handoff to Niall Davis. Turns the corner and takes it in for a Chiefs touchdown. and pounds. Uh, this has been fun to watch. Just, just, just tremendous ebbs and flows of emotion. And again, just right here on the outside. Look at the big guys out front. You know, you got to pay off Kansas City's offensive line. It's Zach Fulton and Rodney Hudson again. This time on a carry. We've seen him out in front on screen passes. Very athletic coming out of the interior of the offensive line. Fifth touchdown of the season. Rushing for Niall Davis. Following the 47-yard run by Jamal Charles. 
Santos, the extra point. Sheets back on top by four. What a day for Charles and the Chiefs' rush offense. Being sponsored by Taco Bell. The new way to Taco Bell is here, only in the app. Kansas City Chiefs back on top. Following a Davis touchdown. Waldrop takes it out. Waldrop across the 20 out of bounds. At the 23. So the Seattle Seahawks offense back on the field. Defending Super Bowl champs. Both of you guys have attempted to repeat. Daryl, you did. Tony, you guys were unable to. How hard is it throughout the course of that next season when everybody's gunning for you? Well, it's not that everybody's gunning for you. At some point, you're going to have some adversity that you have to fight through. Our second year, Emmett Smith was in a contract holdout. We started out 0-2, and, and you just have to understand the reasons why you have a struggle. That's why I like Seattle's approach. Hey, yeah, we struggled a little bit this year, but we also did last year against Tampa and St. Louis, and we worked through that. They're finding their way. They've got to get guys back in the lineup healthy. On first down, nice grab by the tight end, Wilson. So it's Wilson to Wilson again for a Seahawks first down. Seattle without Zach Miller and Luke Wilson, the starter. In the absence of Miller, games 14. Yeah, I and mean, you can see why there was a lot of concern whether Luke Wilson was going to be able to get on the field today. He's had a couple of really big plays for this offense. You know, Kenny, you never have the same team coming back the next year. We lost Jamal Lewis. Uh, Going camp, and then Priest Holmes came here to Kansas City to have a great career. So, uh, a little different every year. This is Lynch, and we have not had a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion since the 03 and 04 Patriots. It's the longest stretch since the Super Bowl era begun without back-to-back -back champs. And, you know, sometimes it, it's it's a guy who's just a great guy in the locker room, like a, a Red Bryant type for the Seattle Seahawks and Chris Clemens and the role that he played. You know, we lost Kenny Norton after, you know, we had back-to-back -back Super Bowls and he went to San Francisco. Kenny was a key guy on that defensive side of the ball. It wasn't Darren Woodson or Charles Haley, but he was very, very important to what we were doing defensively. Here's Lynch on second and six. First down and more to the Kansas City 42. I'll tell you what, if a little bit of chiropractic adjustment's going to make you feel like that, I might go over there and get on that bench myself there, Moose. That might have been a whole pack of Skittles on this <laughs> Man, one. I'll tell you. But look at him. Look at how square he stays. Look at his, his foundation. Even when he spins, as soon as he gets back down, he's in that great foundational spot and he to be able to ball. make it. Yeah, he can make the cut. He can deliver the blow. Just carrying guys extra yards. Third 100-yard day this season for Lynch, his second straight. 111 yards on the ground, off the fake to Turbin. Wilson under pressure from Holly, who sacked him earlier. And now Wilson picks up a first down and slides at the 31. 11 yards for Russell Wilson. Well, wow. Tom Bahali got close. Credit Russell Okun for continuing to work on that because he got beat to the inside, but he didn't give up. He stayed with his assignment, and then when Russell Wilson broke free, he was able to be there to get the block on Tom Bahali to spring him. For Russell Wilson, it's his fourth run of at least 10 yards today. He has 53 on the ground. You need a combination of players to get Russell Wilson down. He's just too elusive. From the 31. Wilson steps to his right, and there he goes again, out of bounds, reaches for a Seahawks first down. That's one of those things that's just frustrating for a defense because you can play coverage. We've seen it a number of times today where Kansas City's done a great job in coverage. They've actually got pressure with just their four, but they just can't get Russell Wilson to the ground. They can't finish that play. Yeah, it's amazing. Justin Houston just gets up the field a little bit and gives Russell Wilson a little bit of a lane, and that's all it takes. Now, you guys got to work together on that defensive line to corral him. As we mentioned earlier, there has not been a game this season in which both teams finish with more rushing than passing yards. We are headed that route. Lynch brought down by Houston at the Kansas City 15. <laughs>
lot of chatter this week in Seattle about whether or not Marshawn Lynch will be a Seahawk in 2015. Ah, jeez, you know, and I know the business side of it kind of creeps into it from time to time, but statistically, emotionally, production, I mean, everything is there. Everything is there. I don't, I don't know why you would even consider it. Wilson after the fake to Lynch. This isn't the same team without Marshawn Lynch. No. I mean, the guy is, he's gutting it out right here. I mean, he stays out here the entire half, you know, working on his hip. Look at the numbers that he has put up. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And look at the bottom one. 20 of the 26 100 rushing yard games come after November 1st. As physical as he runs, it's amazing to me he is that productive in November and December, which is the key thing for a running back. If you've got a cow cow running back, you got to have him in November, December, and playoff push January. On first and goal, this is Lynch. And Lynch takes it inside the five down to the Kansas City four with under nine minutes remaining. And the Chiefs leading by four. And just watch the end of this. You get two and a half, three yards out of the end of that run. He stops short there. Look at the spin, the push, the surge. Seahawks now at 200 yards rushing for the day. That's the center, Max Unger, who's already missed some time this season. Seahawks medical staff tending to veteran center Max Unger, who missed three games with a foot injury, returned last week, and now is injured once again. Keep your eye on your center. He's going to block back, and then everybody's going to kind of roll up, and he's going to get bent over backwards on that pile and getting taken off on the cart, which is never a good sign. And you know, we talked about the return of Max Unger in the first half and, and the importance of his, his communication up front, but it, it's calling the defense and, and calling it with confidence so everybody along the line believes that this is what it's, it's supposed to be done. So Unger headed to the Seahawks locker room. We head to Los Angeles for a game break with Kurt. On Cam Newton hooking up with Kelvin Benjamin, the rookie with his eighth touchdown reception of the season, leads all rookies. Atlanta's up 16-10 in the fourth quarter, and right now New Orleans is getting crushed. If this stands up, Kenny, Moose, and Goose, Atlanta would be in first place at four and six. Incredible, thanks, Kurt. There is Patrick Lewis replacing Unger at center for the Seahawks. And he's lining up right across from Dontari Poe. So you drew one of the, the better interior defensive linemen in the NFL. Second and goal from the four. Wilson throws. The catch is made by Baldwin. But a nice tackle by Ron Parker. Really well done by Ron Parker on that. Again, nothing much after the catch coming all the way from the inside of the trips formation there to the right. Trying to run that little screen pick. Ron Parker recognizes it right away, knows that the player responsible for covering Doug Baldwin is not going to get there. Breaks off his assignment to make the tackle. Tenth player of the drive for the Seahawks. Third and goal. Wilson on third down, hands it off to Lynch, and he is stopped, shy of the goal line. They are just determined not to let anybody have a rushing touchdown on this team. And you, you never know what you're going to do against this offense, especially as physical as Marshawn Lynch, and it's, it's impressive. There's been a couple opportunities for him down and close to get a shot at a rushing touchdown, and Kansas City has not allowed it. Well, right here, you can't worry just about the run. you got to play the pass, too, with fourth down. And now Pete Carroll leaves his offense on the field. Fourth and goal from the two. Seahawks trailing by four, and now a timeout has been taken. Why not Kansas City? Chiefs use their first. Just over seven minutes remaining of the fourth quarter here in Kansas City. Week 11 continues later today on Fox and for some of you on CBS. Then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC. Tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN.
Well, as Goose mentioned, the Chiefs have not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. Here is where they rank on the all-time list. The 49ers hold the record 14 straight games in 2011. I played against that 92 Eagles defense. They were good. You know, I like that timeout that Andy called. You know, you get a little bit of an idea of what they were thinking. It was going to be a pass play. Russell Wilson was going to roll out to his left. They changed personnel a little bit. Let's see if they stick with it or they try to go and punch it in. Seahawks with three receivers. Baldwin in the slot to the left. Lynch lined up to the right of Wilson on fourth down. Wilson to the end zone. Baldwin, the intended receiver. So the Chiefs able to hold on fourth down. Maintain a four-point lead. Sponsored by the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The next big thing is here. Back at Kansas City, Chiefs with a four-point lead. There's Baldwin. He was the intended receiver on the fourth down play. And now a false start. False start. Number 75, offense. Five, half the distance to the goal, first down. Go back and take a look at that fourth down play at the goal line. They're trying to set up the route where you have people and you confuse and you get this underneath. It's just defended really well. There's incidental contact between Sean Smith and Doug Baldwin, right? Boom. They bump in the lower part. There's no hands. There's no shove. It's incidental contact with the legs. That's why there was no flag. Baldwin not happy about the non-call. Following the penalty on McGlynn, more flags. All start. Number 72 offense. Half the distance to the goal. First step. This time it's the left tackle, Eric Fisher. So back to back penalties, and now the Chiefs will snap it from inside the one. Chiefs only had one penalty prior to this series. Back to back with Lennon Fisher. Coming out of the end zone, it's Charles. Well, Malcolm Smith does a good job of finding his way through. We saw him on the big stop earlier in the game to force a field goal by Kansas City on a third and short. Under seven minutes remaining, second down and nine with the Chiefs leading by four. Zone pass incomplete intended for Dwayne Bowe. Well, this is the second time we see this. Both receivers come over. We've got double slant to the left, and we've got Earl Thomas coming down to help out Richard Sherman in that situation. Boy, as aggressive as Earl Thomas is playing in that situation. You know, your coach is upstairs, keep an eye out for stuff. You wonder if a double move at some point isn't coming against Seattle. Third down and nine. And that pass is batted down. Malcolm Smith again. Almost intercepted by Malcolm Smith. I think he's coming from the stand-up at the top of your screen. Just filters in there, unblocked. So not only do the Chiefs go three and out, Darrell, for the first time today, they will punt for the first time. That's been all or nothing for Kansas City. It's either points or turnovers up until this point. Well, Dustin Colquitt getting set to punt from deep in his end zone with Brian Walters back deep for Seattle. Walters, he's across midfield. So this will set up terrific field position for Seattle, who went for it on fourth down on their last drive, could not convert, still trail by four. Seahawks take over at the Kansas City 45. 6-15 remaining in the fourth. Seattle trailing by four. 
Off the fake to Lynch. Wilson throws, catches made by Curse at the 40, cut down by Parker, gain of five. Uh, he had a little spot there in the first half where Seattle was picking on Ron Parker, but I tell you what, he's shaking that off, and he's played solid down the stretch since then. Yeah, he has accepted the challenge right here. This is a great tackle, wraps it up. It's like the old Hawk tackle from his Seattle yeah. Seahawk days. <laughs> Richard Sherman told us guys like Parker who move elsewhere are still honorary members of the Legion of Boom. Once a member, always a member. They called it DBU. <laughs> when we spoke to Richard Sherman yesterday. He's uh, he's fun to talk to. Play clock at two. And Wilson. Delay again. Took too much time. Offense. Hammer is working with the new center and Patrick Lewis and for the not, injured Max Unger. Yeah, it's not just that, Kenny. He tried to go and get an audible to his offensive line. He actually was so loud in the stadium he had to run down the line and tell each guy exactly what he needed to go and do on that play. And that's what ate up all the time, and that's why they got a delay, a delay penalty. Now it's even louder. Yeah, you fired his crew up. Second and ten, it's Lynch. Lynch to the 43. Houston and Marga on the tackle. Gain of two, the Seahawks have now tied their franchise record for most rushing yards in back-to-back -back games. 350 last week, 204 so far today. Seahawks must get to the 35 on the slant. It is Curse. And Jermaine Curse looks to have a Seattle first down. Number 15, Jermaine Curse working against Philip Gaines. Gets inside right away. Delivered on time in a good spot by Russell Wilson. Down to four minutes on the clock. And he has the red flag in his hand. Thinking about challenging the spot. Yeah, that was a very generous spot. I think this is a great challenge by him. You can challenge the spot with regard to a first down. Andy Reid, one of four on challenges this season. Kansas City is challenging the ruling of a first down. And I think oh, wow. Andy has a point. Yeah, you see the marker behind you. I mean, it's it's somewhere over here. Bill Levy will take a look. Andy Reid challenging the spot following the last play. Bill Levy has taken a look. After reviewing the play, the runner was down with the ball at the 36-yard line. It is not a first down. Kansas City will not be charged a timeout. There's the knee down there with contact right prior to the 36, so good challenge by Andy Reid. Put Seattle in another fourth down situation. They were unsuccessful on their last possession on fourth down from the Kansas City two. It is now fourth and one. Fourth and one, it's Lynch. The push does not look like he made it. No, not with the way they're coming in with the spot. They've already signaled first down, Kansas City. Man, that defensive line made a wall on the line of scrimmage that was not going to be penetrated. They give you a chance to look right down that, that first down line and watch the surge right there. They're two yards deep into the backfield. Here come your linebackers, Josh Maga. And James Michael Johnson securing that from their level. Jay Howard, the first contact, and then the linebackers came in. So for the second straight possession, the Kansas City defense stops Seattle on fourth down. The 
Well, the Chiefs take over with three and a half to play. Got a four-point lead. On first down, it's Charles. Nice job staying in bounds. Timeout taken by Seattle there first. And this does get bigger, Kenny, as we look at that score of that St. Louis-Denver game. 22-7, St. Louis leading the Broncos. Well, Darrell, Wednesday, Fox College Hoops back on Fox Sports 1 with a great early season matchup as Creighton looks to upset 19th-ranked Oklahoma. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. You mentioned that Denver score trailing the Rams 22-7. A win by the Chiefs and a loss by the Broncos, and they would have identical records with six games to play. They will face each other here on November 30th. Chiefs have a short week following this one. They'll take on Oakland on the road this Thursday night. Yeah, but going into that Denver game on that rematch, that's 10 days for Andy Reid to get ready for the Denver Broncos, and he has a very, very good track record off of buys and with extra time. Broncos beat the Chiefs by seven earlier this season. Here is Charles, turns the corner, and takes it out to the 45-yard line. Richard Sherman, the tackle, and he was slow to get up. And now the Seahawks will use their second timeout. Stop the clock with 3.13 remaining after the Chiefs came up huge defensively twice in this fourth quarter on fourth down. Yeah, two different situations down near the goal line. They elect to go with the pass. And it's a nice play by Sean Smith and Phillip Gaines exchanging coverage responsibilities right there. And then on the last series, it's the front. We had the back end on the first fourth down. This time, it's the defensive line and the linebackers stuffing Marshawn Lynch. So the Chiefs with a four-point lead. Seattle has used two timeouts. It is now third down and one for Kansas City. Jamal Charles with 159 yards on the ground today. And a pair of touchdowns. Chiefs need a yard. Here's Charles, and he will not get there. Both of these defenses, man, forming a wall on the line of scrimmage. All their eyes in the backfield. Look at the penetration they get right here and hold it up. Now, Michael Bennett does a good job. I like the play call. Let's go right where Brandon Meebane used to be. Let's, let's see how Kevin Williams is going to play. And guess what? Kevin Williams does a heck of a job. He gets Zach Fulton spun around and gets his big body in there to clog that hole. He gets so fired up. Looks like he can get in there and, and, and play on third and one, huh? Moose? He gets fired up over there on that sideline. Well, his team follows his emotion. Oh, you got to love his emotion, man. He is he, He's all in, man. He is all in. You would never think that Pete Carroll is the second oldest head coach <laughs> in the no, NFL. Trailing not at all. Trailing only Tom Coughlin. He has more energy than any... Uh, really, it's, it's unbelievable how much energy he comes into our meetings, all fired up. We'll talk about anything. He just he's a great motivator, and he does a great job with these guys. Walk out of our meetings sometimes, Daryl. I get I, I want to go play again. The way he talks, excited about opportunity. And they walk out on the field pregame and see how big these guys are. <laughs> I walk to the Second booth. Guess. <laughs> You limp to the booth and you're like, no, I'm not going to go out there. I remember what it feels like on Monday after these games. Seahawks use their final timeout. Chiefs will punt for only the second time today. So the defense on both sides coming up big 
here in the fourth quarter. Chiefs stopping Seattle twice on fourth down, and now the Seattle defense with the big play on third down, forcing a Kansas City punt. It's just a little bit of a throwback game here, you know. As you pointed out, Kenny, through the course of the game, still both teams with more rushing yards than passing yards. We've seen great defensive stands. It's just been, it's been fun. I, I, I've really enjoyed this game. Walters back deep for Seattle. Seahawks out of timeouts, but they will get the ball back. Under three minutes to play in the fourth. Walters lets it go. What a save. Well, the first one is clean. The first save was clean. It's the second one that I want to see. See if his foot was in the end zone. I think the second player might have touched the line. The first player, actually, that saves it from going in, I think that's good. I think right here, Junior Hemingway. Yeah, that's good. Now, here's, here's the one I want to see. Does he... No, he keeps oh, that out. No. He's not there. Well done by the referees. That's tremendous. That's well done. Yeah, we thought Marcus Cooper was the guy who was in the end zone, touched the ball, but it wasn't him. Oh, tremendous play right there by Junior Hemingway, but yeah, I yeah. thought Marcus Cooper had touched the ball. He did not. Cooper let it go, and then Albert Wilson came in. Great special teams. So the Seahawks, who trail by four, Lead to go 96 yards. Wilson in trouble in the end zone. He gets rid of it to Lynch. How did he complete that ball? I have no idea. He, he amazes me, man. He's in full grass. Watch this. I mean, he is in the grass and finds a way to go and even move his arm forward. I can't believe he even got the ball out. Yeah, with his arm being pulled the other way by Poe, able to get rid of it. Clock winding down, now at 2.15. Wilson again from the end zone. And he throws this one out of bounds in the vicinity of Jermaine Curse. Now third down and nine. Wilson from the end zone again on third down. He throws and the catch is made for a first down. Doug Baldwin out to the 27-yard line. A huge play. 22 yards from Wilson to Baldwin on third and nine. We hit the two-minute warning here in Kansas City. Chiefs lead by four. Great game here in Kansas City. We welcome those of you who have just joined us. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks trailing by four. No timeouts remaining. Following the two-minute warning, Wilson's pass off the hands of the tight end, Cooper Helfin. Well, I'll take you back after a great special teams play by the Kansas City punt team that had them all backed up. They were able to, to get out of that deep part of their own end zone. They miss right here. Eric Berry on the coverage, but... Russell Wilson showing tremendous athleticism, completing a ball to Marshawn Lynch with Dontari Poe hanging on him in the end zone, and then great poise on a third and long to complete to get him to this point in the field. Well, the Seahawks must still go 72 yards, trailing by four with no timeouts. Wilson on second down, down he goes, back at the 19-yard line. It is Dontari Poe, his fifth sack of the season. Dontari Poe, watch the move right here, he comes up, he clubs him with his outside hand, rips it, just keeps coming upfield. And Russell Wilson cannot get away from him. Awesome pass rush right up the middle from Poe. Second sack of the game for the Chiefs, now third down and 19. 
Wilson over the middle, looking for the tight end, Helfit. Once again, it will be fourth down. Helfit, number 84 right here, just getting vertical down the hash marks, bending it around, Josh Marga. Hussein Abdullah coming across from the opposite safety position to get a hand on that. So it comes down to this, fourth down and 19. Seattle must get to the 38 for a first down, but a timeout is taken by the Chiefs prior to the snap. The Denver Broncos have lost to the St. Louis Rams 22-7. So the Chiefs know that with a win, they would pull up to a first place tie with Denver in the AFC West and the Kansas City defense has come up big twice stopping Seattle on fourth down here in the fourth quarter. A little bit of an old school flair to this game and Howie Long talked about at halftime during the during the, the break that uh, it reminded him of a game from the mid 80s back when it was the AFC West and it was Kansas City and Seattle and it's been that way. Both teams with more rushing yards than passing yards. Kansas City with two huge fourth down stands. Uh, just the, the execution by Seattle coming off the back of their end zone in this situation. Seattle having a big stop themselves to force that punt. Terrific game, one of the best that we've seen this year. Smash mouth football, boys. Fourth and 19. Seattle must convert. Pressure from Tom Bahali. Wilson gets rid of it. Incomplete. Richardson, the intended receiver, no flags. Kansas City's front has been relentless the last couple of series here. They've, they've been close on a number of occasions, but it's been Russell Wilson's athletic ability that's got him out of those jams. Sean Smith, a big physical corner. You can see him right there working against the speed of Paul Richardson. He stays step for step with him right on that little comeback route at the, at the sticks. So the Kansas City Chiefs will be able to run out the clock. Seattle out of timeouts. Seahawks had won their last three. And they have a huge game next week at home against Arizona. Five of their last six against division rivals. Chiefs will win their fifth consecutive game and move into a tie with Denver. America's game of the week coming up. Many of you will see the Eagles and the Packers or the Lions and the Cardinals. For the Chiefs, this will be their seventh win in the last eight games but a short week Thursday night in Oakland yeah take care of your business get ready on that short week then you've got your big matchup with Denver Andy Reid's not gonna have them looking ahead but you know again this this Kansas City team some chatter around town about hey we don't have any wide receiver touchdowns we watch the way this team functions during the course of this game and that is not an issue it's it's not the style of Alex Smith he's a he's a guy that's a deliberate guy going down methodically taking the team down. He uses his running backs, he uses his tight ends, he leans on Jamal Charles and Niall Davis in the running game. But they play great complimentary football, offense, defense, they're special teams with a huge play on that punt. Kansas City's a good team, and Seattle just has to get back on track. They're close. So the Chiefs won it 24-20, now to Charlotte for the conclusion of Carolina and Atlanta. Final score.